You are now listening to the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. This is episode 27. Thanks for listening to the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. Here to help educate, motivate, and put you on the right path to take control of your health through weekly discussions on topics in the medical field, public health arena, and in your community. And now your host, Dr. Barry. Welcome to Lunch and Learn today with Dr. Barry. And today I have an exciting podcast episode. We're going to be talking about diabetes. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure how I went this long without talking about diabetes. It is something that I see in my office every day. It is something that now I'm seeing in the hospital setting every day. So I don't know how with all of the episodes, the live stream videos, uh, the blogging posts that I somehow missed this. But better late than never, we're bringing diabetes. And what better time to bring it than our first podcast episode that's pretty much like after the launch, right? So first of all, I wanted to thank everyone who was able to partake in the podcast launch. It was 13 days of just episodes after episodes. And first of all, I want to thank you guys for not spamming me. I do apologize. I know it seemed like everywhere you turn, there was another podcasting post or another audiogram video of one of my podcasting episodes. Much appreciated here on this end. I promise you it's going to calm down now. You're not going to have to worry about seeing me everywhere unless you want to. But today, again, special topic. We're going to be talking about diabetes and we're going to get right into I want to first give a personal shout out to a friend of mine, Vic Lee, out there who's been an avid supporter all the way from the blogging days, who's been following me with the live stream, who's now rocking with us on the podcast. I do like to shout out my listeners every now and then. So if you have a review and, you know, you want to get shout out, let me know and I'll make sure I put your name out there. So shout out to Vic Lee today. And remember for today's show notes, please go to drpierresblog.com forward slash LLP 027. Again, for today's show notes and links to anything we may mention in today's episode, please go to drpierresblog.com forward slash LLP 027. So let's get ready for another great episode and Here we go. Let's talk about diabetes. And today I wanted to talk on diabetes, which is such an important topic, especially being an internist, being an outpatient physician, and now an inpatient physician as well. It is one of those disorders that I do probably not go a day without seeing. So I thought it was very surprising when I launched a podcast that I hadn't talked about diabetes yet on a live stream video. Very shocking. But you know what? Here we are. We are launching the first episode after our launch for the 13 days of Lunch Alone with Dr. Barry. And of course, the first topic I had to choose had to be diabetes. So today we're going to learn about what is diabetes. I'm going to give you some some facts and figures which are definitely going to be very startling for some of y'all. We're going to talk about very common symptoms of diabetes, very common diagnostic testing for diabetic. And then we're going to talk about three main types. Now, we're not going to, we're going to talk a little bit about treatment, but I'm not going to go too heavy for it. Just understand that insulin is usually king when it comes to treatment, for especially for certain types of your diabetic patients. So we'll talk about that. And I'm also going to talk about what happens, you know what, if you don't, Control your diabetes and you end up in the hospital. So stay tuned and let's uh, get ready for an upper episode. So what is diabetes, right? So I'll give you the you know textbook definition. Diabetes is a disease in which your body cannot produce or respond to the hormone insulin. And that impairment causes problems metabolizing carbohydrates, which ends up and having elevated blood sugars, sugars in the, an elevated blood sugar in the urine, and elevated concerns, 
elsewhere. So I think it's first and foremost that we definitely have to kind of kind of hit pause and think about, well, you know, if if the body has a problem, you know, dealing with this insulin, well, the number one question has to be, what is insulin, right? So insulin is actually a hormone that all of our bodies, well, some, uh, I, I, let, me, let, me, let me preface that some of us make, it's made in the pancreas, which is an organ in your abdomen, and it actually helps metabolize carbs, fats, and proteins. So while you may hear a lot about carbs and low-carb diet, especially when we talk about our diabetic patients, understand that for patients who are diabetic and have a problem with their insulin, you know, they're not only are they having problems, you know, breaking down and dealing with carbs, they're having problems dealing with fats and proteins as well. So insulin is an extremely important hormone that I don't think it's it's, you know, just due, especially when we talk about diabetes. I know for a lot of my patients, you know, when they hear diabetes, they always think about blood sugar. That's always the first thing. Sugar, sugar, sugar. And then number two is carbs, right? So I definitely want to make sure we kind of start the ball off rolling with the understanding that, yes, insulin does play a huge factor in, you know, metabolizing carbs, but it also plays a huge factor in metabolizing fats and proteins as well. So let's talk about some facts for diabetes, which I think are very troubling. And it's something that unfortunately has not improved here in the United States and especially worldwide. So when I get my patients and I get that patient in the office and it's the first time they're telling me that they're a diabetic or I have to tell them for the first time that I'm a diabetic, I usually give them my top five rant. I like to call this a top five rant. Top five reasons why you do not want diabetes. Diabetes is the top five cause for patients suffering a heart attack. Diabetes is a top five cause for patients suffering a stroke. Diabetes is is a top five cause for patients to be on dialysis. And I'm pretty sure if you're not listening uh, on dialysis, you probably know someone who has been on dialysis or is currently on dialysis. Diabetes, again, is also a top five cause for blindness in the world. So blindness in the world is caused by diabetes as well. And last but not least, diabetes is a top five cause for patients undergoing amputations of their extremities. Think about that. So if you ever walked around and you've ever seen someone who was missing a part of their toe, missing a part of their their foot, missing below the knee, if you've ever seen that, there's an extremely good chance that diabetes plays a role, right? So that's, that's the top five rant I give right in the beginning, say, hey, if you want to play with this diabetes, go ahead. But this is what you got, you know, to deal with, right? And when I, and even when I talk about the top five, you know, diabetes is a very major cause of blindness in the world, and it's actually the number one cause for patients, you know, to end up on dialysis and then end up having an amputation. Again, not both together. You know, some patients end up dialysis, some patients end up, you know, getting a toe cut off. And that happens, you know, I see that a lot in my office and I see that now in the hospital setting as well. Patients who are diabetic have an increased risk for having a stroke, increased risk for having any vascular problem that you can think of from head to toe. So when we think about strokes, remember strokes are, and we talked about this on a previous episode, a stroke is just a heart attack in the brain. It's just an, a, a time frame where you're not getting enough blood flow to a certain area. So think about strokes in that, a heart attack in the brain. And of course, it increased chance of, you know, heart attacks and increased chance of strokes. But, you know, let's think about it for patients who are getting, you know, their toe amputated. There's just as much, you know, blood vessels running down to the legs as well. So if you're having a, a disease, which, you know, we're talking about diabetes, diabetes is a subject today. If you're having a disease that causes all these problems, you know, if it can give you an increased chance of a heart attack, of course, it's going to give you an increased chance of having vascular problems below. So if you don't take anything from, you know, the, the podcast episode today, I want you to learn that and think about how one, insulin is extremely important when we talk about diabetes. And two, diabetes, yes, you know, gets all the hoopla because of the abnormal sugar, but diabetes can really cause a problem. Like I see myself, Dr. Pierre, diabetes being more of a vascular problem 
than a sugar problem so that you know and that's why we kind of t- titled you know the episode why blood sugar just isn't as important in diabetes like i'm not really concerned about your blood pressure yes it plays a role yes it lets me know if we need to control it better or not but the most important thing especially for your diabetic patients is that i gotta make sure there's no vascular problems going down that i may need to be uh, concerned about so let's let's talk about some numbers let's talk about some money patients with diabetes spend two times as much on their medical care over their lifetime than patients who do not have diabetes two times think about that patients are also twice as likely to end up in the er so you have a disease that already costs you twice as much than joe blow down the street who does not have the disease even though they smoke like chimneys and they drink like crazy but here you have a disease that because you're diagnosed you now have doubled the risk of end up being in the the er room for a certain issue you've doubled the amount that you're going to spend over the lifetime imagine the lifetime you're going to spend just you're going to spend twice as much than that person who does not have diabetes from a u.s based cost standpoint diabetes costs us about 250 billion and yes that's billion with a b diabetes costs us 250 billion per year in just the diagnosis of it we spend about 175 on 75 billion on direct costs because of diabetes we also spend about 70 billion on reduced productivity what is reduced productivity if you've ever had to call into work for you know a through z that's what they consider reduced productivity because now you can't do the work because you're sick so you have a lot of these new corporations that are actually you know promoting health promoting fitness within because they understand that you know if we have more healthier employees then we'll reduce the amount of reduced productivity that they cost us so again even though it sounds like you know they're doing you the favor by you know having that gym there or having those health coaches and wellness coaches come to speak to you they're really thinking about the bottom line from that standpoint in the united states about 30 million americans are affected with diabetes and probably more because we have a lot who don't get diagnosed and it's in a in a worldwide standpoint it's a major player which with leading with the seventh leading cause of death and depending on where you read some people feel like that that's actually a little bit lower from that standpoint there who who gets affected of course african americans native americans and hispanics are at the top of the food chain as far as those who get affected more by diabetes and again i already said if you're affected by diabetes you're twice as you're you're twice as likely to end up in the er you're going to spend twice as much money you know on your medical care over your lifetime just because you're diabetes so diabetes is definitely something that is going to hit you where it hurts if you know money's money's your you know uh, you know your number one motivator so next we're going to talk about diabetic symptoms and these are very common symptoms that majority of your diabetics are going to be complaining about to the point where in the medical side we just call it the three p's and you know i added a different an, an extra one so we call it polyuria that means you're going to the bathroom all the time i mean you can doesn't matter if you eat doesn't matter if you drink doesn't matter if you have a little sip of coffee you're going to the bathroom all the time and you feel like you have to keep going so polyuria so we're going to talk about polydipsia and polydipsia means that you have this excessive amount of thirst like you are just always thirsty regardless if you drink a gallon of water 15 20 minutes later you gotta drink another gallon of water because you're just always thirsty your brain does not sense that hey this kid's been drinking a whole gallon of water i don't think we need it anymore you just continue to drink and you know that's what diabetes does diabetes causes these metabolic changes that makes your body think that you're thirsty even though you've definitely hydrated yourself from a standpoint there so that's that's polydipsia and last is polyphagia polyphagia is an important one because polyphagia is a person who just eats too much and eats a lot and their appetite is through the roof so they're always eating but what's important about polyphagia especially in your patients with diabetics is they have very unexplained weight loss and that's why they end up actually seeing me in the outpatient setting is because they'll come in and say, Doc, I'm eating, I'm drinking, you know, I'm, I'm eating everything in sight, and I still keep losing weight. 
So that's a very classic sign for us to say, hold on, is this, is this it? Is this diabetes? Because this is how it usually presents, especially in your older population. Next, let's go to, so recap on our classical symptoms. We talked about polyuria, going to the bathroom a lot. We talked about polydipsia, you know, this excessive amount of thirst. And then we talked about polyphagia, which means I just eat everything in sight. And then number four, you can add unexplained weight loss. That's always something that we always keep an eye on, especially for our diabetic patients. Next section, we're going to talk about the diagnostic tests to kind of prove whether you're diabetic or not. And these are both um, blood tests. Uh, The first one is what we call the A1C. So this is something you've probably seen, you know, popularized in the, on TV, right? Like everyone's talking about A1C, A1C, A1C. The A1C is a snapshot. That's how we like to think about it. An A1C is a snapshot of a patient's blood sugar for the past three months. And we can get a very good idea how well they've been controlling their blood sugar, if they've been taking their medications or if they've been taking too much medications based on their A1C. So A1C gives us a very, you know, good diagnostic marker. But there's some others, right? So let's do, let's say you do a random, you know, finger test, right? Like I do a random finger test and your number pops up above 200. You, my friend, are a diabetic, Because your body should never, ever get above 200 unless there's a medical reason why it can't. And that same thing for a patient who may come back the next day because, you know, he says, I caught him off guard and, you know, he's not going to eat anything. Now check his blood sugar. For patients who have what we call a fasting blood sugar, a greater than, I'm sorry, than 126, they are also diabetic. So you got a couple criteria right there. We have the A1C. We have, you know, elevated blood sugars at a random time, and the number is 200. And then we have the fasting blood sugar, which is, you know, a person who doesn't eat after midnight, then they check the blood sugar. As long as it's not above 126, you're fine as well. And then we also do this two-hour glucose test, but we'll, we'll talk about more when we talk about gestational diabetes. So next section, we're gonna let's talk about the types now because we've 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 given the background because that's what's important. We've given the background, so let's talk about the different types and most in particular with this day we're gonna be talking about type one, type two, and gestational diabetes. So those three topics are gonna be discussed um, uh, following. So type one diabetes is used to be I'm sorry known as insulin dependent diabetes. But we learn and we may have, you know, some of you may know that you may have a patient who or a relative who used to be on diabetes, who used to only take the pill form, and now they got to take insulin. So that's why we stopped calling type 1 diabetes insulin dependent because we started having a lot more of our type 2 diabetic patients end up needing insulin as well. So, but you can sometimes refer to this as juvenile dependent because your type 1 diabetic patients tend to get diagnosed at a much early age. And type 1 diabetes is, again, we talked about the, the body's inability to deal with insulin. And the issue with type 1 is that your body, your body itself actually attacks the pancreas and causes it not to produce any insulin whatsoever. So you have zero amounts of insulin insulin on board when you're a type 1 patient and autoimmunity is the major cause of it with about 85 percent of your type 1 diabetic patients having those antibodies against the cells that make the insulin according to the cdc about one to two million one to two million have type 1 diabetes it's a it's the most common metabolic disorder in children, it's more common in men than women. And again, we talked about the age, the the race, racial groups. Native Americans, African Americans, Hispanics are the ones who are uh, predominantly affected. And you know their signs and symptoms and their problems pretty much carries the same in terms of increased risk of infections. And you know while while I have you guys on my soapbox, for my diabetic patients, can you please get your flu shot? When I talk about diabetes and we've talked about insulin, we've talked about, you know, the diabetes being a vascular problem. But when your blood sugar is extremely high, you can't fight infection the same. So that's why we always recommend getting your flu shot every year because because you're a diabetic. Again, we talked about it two times more likely to end up in the ER for pneumonia or a cold. So it's extremely important to do your 
annual flu shot. So again, sorry, sorry to caveat. Just wanted to, you know, while I had your listening ears, wanted to promote everybody getting a flu shot. So a lot of problems kind of roll with type one diabetics. You know, their increased risk of infections. You know, microvascular issues, and that's where you have the blindness. That's where you have the patients being a dialysis occur, and the macrovascular. If you can think about it, of course, is where the big area is at. So that's where a person could suffer a heart attack or a person could suffer a stroke. And it's most important to really try to recognize the signs and symptoms because for a lot of children, the first time they're diagnosed with diabetes is when they're in the hospital after having like a bad event because their sugars were out of whack. So extremely important to one, make sure that if you're a diabetic patient, you're taking medication because we don't want all of these problems to happen. So definitely key there. Next one, we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes, right? Type 2 diabetes, again, it's characterized by elevated blood sugars. But in this case, there's insulin around. The insulin just does not work. Is anybody familiar with that? You know, uh, you know, uh, a, a worker bee that's supposed to be working and is just sitting there. That's what insulin does in your patients with type 2 diabetes is that it's there. But it's not really doing much. It doesn't really help it. So you tend to having to give medications to try to help, you know, ease that that pressure of the body system to try to deal with these uncontrolled proteins and fats and sugars. So most most important uh, to focus on that, right? And the big thing is that your type two diabetics are not all the time needing to deal with insulin. Not to say that they are able to get away with it, but. Some of the patients, again, like I said, we had to actually take away the term independent. We had to take away the term insulin dependent diabetic because we started getting so much more people who needed it and they were type two. And the the biggest thing, especially from a characterization of type two diabetes is that, again, it causes problems with insulin resistance. And sometimes your body just does not produce enough. So you got those two factors where. Your body's not producing enough insulin, so you're going to have problems. And then you have the issue where the insulin it does produce just does not work. So very important to focus on, you know, type 2 diabetics. And your type 2 diabetics, just from a quick numbers game, make up 80% of the cases of diabetes. So I talked earlier about 30 million people, you know, being diabetic. So 80% of that 30 million is due to that. So most important there, very important, very important. Some risk factors associated with type 2 diabetes. You know, older population, usually about over the age of 40. A person who is overweight is another one. A person who has a strong family history, especially that first degree relative. We talked about just being Hispanic, Native American, African American, causing problems and causing you to have an increased risk factor to be on insulin or metformin or any of these other medications to kind of treat diabetes, right? So very important to uh, keep an eye on. Hypertension or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, again, are all factors that kind of are associated with it. And I read an article sometime last year that talked about in the genetic map of things, they have shown that high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity all kind of fall around the same you know trap where diabetes falls so it's not a shocker to have your patient who not only is diabetic not only is hypertensive but also has high cholesterol very important to kind of keep an eye on that uh, moving forward and the next one our last uh, topic our last type i should say is gestational diabetes And this accounts for 90% of cases of diabetes in patients who are pregnant. I will tell you, even from personal experience, that my wife had gestational diabetes with our first child. And some of the concerns that I'm going to talk about are some of the concerns that she had as well. So how do we first diagnose patients with gestational diabetes? You know, we actually make them drink this sugary solution after an hour. And then we check their blood sugar because we know if a patient does not have diabetes, their blood sugar will respond appropriately. But if the patient does have diabetes, we're going to have some problems. And usually what tends to occur for patients who are in that 
I've never had diabetes, but the test comes back positive. We then turn around and make them do a three hour version. So if the one hour one is inconclusive, you're definitely going to do that three hour one. And, you know, concerns for the baby include the baby being big, excess birth weight. If you've ever seen anyone, especially on TV with these 10 pound babies, 11 pound babies, 12 pound babies, just understand that most likely it was due to the mom being gestational diabetic or diabetic beforehand. And another concern for the baby is just early preterm birth. And then there's some respiratory distress syndrome, which is something we always keep an eye on and making sure that that stays stable as well. So that's some concerns for the baby. Of course, concerns for the mom, because the mom is important, extremely important, is patients can develop high blood pressure. Patients can develop what is known as preeclampsia, which is almost a surgical emergency. And patients can develop diabetes along the way. Like right when the baby's gone, diabetes doesn't seem to really go anywhere. It likes where it's at. So very important to kind of keep an eye on and keep an eye on your mom or your uh, dad or your uncle or your grandfather, anybody, whatever that family member is, keep an eye on them. You know, make sure they're taking their medications or help them take their medication for them. You know, that's, you know, I think that's that's the big thing there, right? Just make sure we're doing right, you know, by the people we love. And then last but not least segment is in the hospital. So what happens in the hospital setting? Because for those who have not been following me, maybe this is your first episode listening to the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. You understand that I recently changed jobs. So you'll still hear me kind of refer to, oh, when patients see me outpatient. And I have to kind of remind myself that, oh, you know what? They don't do that anymore. They only see me in the hospital. But in the hospital setting, if the blood sugar has not been controlled and they end up getting sick, we actually have two types of disorders that it's most likely to be either DKA, which is diabetic ketoacidosis, or what we like to uh, call in the medical world honk, or but now it's actually called HHS, which is hyperketotic hyperosmolar syndrome. Both of these spell that the 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 sugar is out of whack. That's what both of these say right off the bat. That there's something wrong with the sugar. And your DKA patients, those are very sickly looking patients, but they tend to walk out the hospital like it's nobody business. Once we do some some medical things, and again, I won't get into the jargon here. Once we do those things, you know, they absolutely love us. So that's important. And then HHS, remember the hyperketotic hyperosmolar syndrome? That is very important because remember we talked about your type 2 diabetics never needing insulin at least to continue to live. This is one of the reasons why, because they make enough insulin so you will never, ever go into type 1 uh, DKA at, because you're a type 1 patient. You'll never go into DKA being a type 2 patient because of that protection that you have. So very important there uh, for those two hospital aspects. So in conclusion, we talked about what is diabetes. We talked about in and even segued into how important insulin is. We also talked about some diabetic facts, which are startling, but true, unfortunately. We talked about certain symptoms being a diabetic that you need to deal with. And we talked about just kind of the discussion in this different types of diabetes. So very important to, you know, keep an eye on the game. But that's that's kind of where we're at, especially with this episode. You know, that's where we ended. And first of all, I think it was something that needed to be said, something that needed to be talked about. Diabetes is one of these disorders that if you do not get a handle of it early, it can and will likely itch you alive. And because we don't want diabetes to eat you alive, you have to be mindful if you are a diabetic. And if you don't know you're a diabetic and you know someone who is, you have to be mindful on what they eat, what they drink, when they eat, and when they drink as well, just as important from that standpoint there. So thank you for tuning in another episode of the Lunch and Learn. I will see you guys 
next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. If you want to find out more about the episode, please go to www.lunchlearnpod.com. That's www.lunchlearnpod.com for the show notes and any links that may have been mentioned in today's episode. If you're interested in joining the Lunch Learn Pod community, head over to either the website lunchlearnpod.com or join us on Facebook and Twitter with the same username, Lunch Learn Pod. And again, you can find uh, all of these links on uh, the website. If you have any questions, any comments, or any requests for uh, topics to you know debut on the show, please let that be known. And don't forget to use uh, the hashtag Lunch Learn Pod when you're listening to the episode. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's episode, and I'll see you next week.